when I came here 14 years ago. When you said lifer, it kind of was a little bit of a derogatory term. Uh, prices are gonna go up so high that if I don't buy it now, I have to buy it like today. Housing is terrifying. Oh, you can go to the river, a pop-up store, you can go to a concert. But I think for me, that's one of the things that's kind of playing into my decision oh, to leave. Oh, I, I ain't getting shot here, so I'm all right. Foreigners have conflict with other relatives or family members in Korea, right? That is story of my life. When we came here, I just had to be speaking Korean, not Asian looking. Okay, I can be on TV now. Yeah. If you want to compete now, Bringing Korea one slice closer to the world with extraordinary and fun toppings. Welcome to the Korean Pizza Club, KPC. I'm your host, David Kim, and we have some special guests here in the studio. Please introduce yourselves, starting with ladies first. Thank you. Um, my name is April Lin, and uh, I'm from the US. I was born in Florida and lived in Texas and California for a little while. And now I live here in Korea, and I am a voice actress. Voice actress? Yes. yes. And I <laughs> I have to repeat this again. <laughs> this is take two, by the way. But we have some I, technical what's difficulties. Her, what's it's her okay. voice sound like? <laughs> her voice sounds like a bird. <laughs> and these guys laughed at it. Because, yeah, because what kind of bird? Um, not a chicken. Uh, not, no. not a chicken. Yeah, <laughs> Mike was trolling, and he was like, "A chicken?" Mike no, was no, no, trolling, no. but I actually—that's a very nice compliment. Thank you. A chicken? <laughs> a chicken? No, like no, voice? the bird. Oh, oh the yeah, bird yeah. Part. Like Thank Tweety. You. you know? I appreciate that. Yeah, Thank yeah. you very much. So, how long have you been living in Korea? Um, well, the first time we recorded this, I was trying to be purposely vague about my answer, but I will just say I've been here for a long time. A long time. <laughs> okay. You, you guys guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll get into the details later. Yes. Yeah. And Alex? Uh, my name's Alex. I'm an American. I've been here for a long time. Gur time, <laughs> Long I guess. That's time. true. Uh, okay. <laughs> I've also been here for a while, and I'm a second time member of the podcast, and I work in radio, TV, English content, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. I'm a freelancer. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can we can say that you've been here for 14 years. <laughs> I was trying to be in purpose. Don't I've been copy here. me. Uh, copy I've been cat. here 14 years. Yeah. All, mm -hmm. all in Seoul. I mean, because he was on the last podcast episode, everybody knows already, there's, so there's every, no secret to everybody that. Everybody knows I, about I, no, Alex. No, we weren't the top-rated podcast. There are higher-viewed podcasts, I mean, so we need more people. Okay, okay. but <laughs> this will get a lot <laughs> of views. All right, all yes, right. Yes. This will get a lot of views. Okay, and we it. have Mike. Yes, what is up? Mm -hmm. uh, name is Mike, and uh, I've been living in Korea now for about nine years. Nine years? Nine years. You it's guys, a long time. wow! Yeah, the time has flown by, and yeah, making content, and that's what I do all day is just make <laughs> content for people and for myself. Mm. So I have an English, a channel that teaches English, on TikTok, as well as I teach content creation as well. So mm. it's like literally, I live and breathe content at this moment. And drop the name, plug it in. Yeah, so TikTok name is American Mike. So I'm American. So American. American Mike, and then. Uh, as of right now, the academy that I teach content creation is It's Us Academy. So it's on Instagram. Follow if you're trying to learn how to make good content. Great. Nice. Great. So speaking of content, let's go into the actual content for today. So uh, in today's episode, we will delve into the experiences and considerations of living in Korea, just, not just for a short term or visiting, but maybe potentially even longer and even forever. <laughs> oh my god. For life. Oh, yeah. Dun, dun. Yeah. So we're going to discuss all the pros and cons, cultural nuances, and the factors to consider when deciding whether to pursue life in Korea or not. Okay. Before we go on, I'd like to set today's main keyword as lifer. Uh, this is a new terminology I've learned from Alex. Not please. a new term, but new for you. New for me. Yeah. So please explain <laughs> what it is. So I don't know the origin story of, of lifer. However, in Korea, when I came here 14 years ago, when you said lifer, it kind of was a little bit of a derogatory term mm -hmm. that was used to describe someone who like didn't know what they're doing with their lives. So they just stayed as an English teacher for way too long, 10 years or longer. And while that term still would apply to them, I think that term has changed because so many more people have decided to make their lives in Korea that lifer just means, you know, someone who's going to live in Korea probably for the rest of their life. Right. 
Yeah, I think mm -hmm. the word itself is pretty self-explanatory, but um, it's just to be clear, it's safe to use right now yeah, yeah. Like, with the nuance and stuff. Yes. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, if, if I were to go up to hard, don't use the hard R, <laughs> like fur, like fur. <laughs> but if I were to go to Itaewon, and I mean, it, it kind of sounds awkward. But if I were to, for example, say like, oh, so are you a lifer? I don't think that's a bad thing anymore. Okay. No, I no, think no. I think sometimes maybe among friends they like throw it around as like a joking insult, mm. like, oh, you're a lifer or lifer. whatever. But I, yeah, it's not a negative yeah, term okay. at all. Yeah, it just means someone who has roots it, here. It's, yeah, yeah. 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 It used to be kind of a negative term. Uh, I don't want to say about Korea, but the reason we said lifer is because these are people who didn't know what to do with their lives. Mm. So why would you stay in Korea? But now because so many more jobs and opportunities have opened up there are mm -hmm. great reasons to stay in korea mm -hmm. and so at the time it was like why be in korea but now it's like yeah, of course you might want to stay in yeah, korea yeah. so yeah. it's not a bad thing because back then you could only be i don't know like you could take certain jobs there weren't yeah. as many yeah. options manufacturing yeah. or english teacher mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right right like yeah that's it exactly because i mean now it's 2023 like when we came or when i came it was 2014 and so a lot has changed yeah. since then. And so now living in Korea actually is a viable option. Yeah, right. that's right. And you've stayed for nine years already. Nine How's years. your life been so far? <laughs> My life has been beauty. Oh. Beauty. Wow. Okay. May, <laughs> May I'm taking from the you, song. Is that Taeyeon song? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My God. What? My life is a beauty. Life is yeah, so yeah. beauty. <laughs> right, right. I can hear the lyrics. Here. <laughs> so yeah, just, um, I just, love, I love living here. I find it very safe. We can probably talk about that later. Mm -hmm. But just, you know, safe, um, good job really good friends mm. you know mm -hmm. being with good people Aww. Aww. Yeah. that was such a beautiful moment yeah, yeah you guys so. need to see the video <laughs> so it's all good stuff. anyway I'm, he's here for his boo mm. that's true his Not wife's it. there it's getting awkward that's <laughs> i thought you were his wife <laughs> <laughs> she thinks so sometimes too. so uh, mike are you considering to stay longer or what's your plan that is a really good question i still have not figured it out yet mm -hmm. and i think it's because other than family, like family would be the only thing really mm -hmm. pulling me home. But because everything is so is going really well for me, mm -hmm. I don't feel that pull to leave. OK, that's great. That's great to hear. Actually, may there be more success and prosperity and beauty. You. Thank you. Yeah. Lots yeah. of beauty. There OK, you go, Alex. Yes. In response to the question about whether or not I'm going to stay long term, mm -hmm. I think I will be in Korea long term. Mm -hmm. However, there's a chance I might go back to America for a year or two or something like that. Yeah. But I feel like I'm enjoying life so much that I might make this my eventual life or where, where, <laughs> route. That's the nice yeah. thing. The where I die home. That's the where way. I wow. Oh, wow. He, he just made there. it like permanent. He, yeah. he said where the where I, I, die. I die place. Wow. 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 Yeah, coin that, coin that. That's <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, where I die. Put place. that on a T-shirt. I mean, like, like I don't know. Put it on my tombstone. Whatever. Yeah, let, let me this know. This is the I, where I die place. Let me know if I have to cut this out or not. But like, you're in a serious relationship here. Oh, that's too, cool. Right? Uh, I'm in a serious relationship. It's not quite at the permanent stage mm -hmm. of marriage, but it seems to be going that way. With a Korean person. With a Korean, yeah. and mm -hmm. if it ends up that way. We have decided that we want to stay near one of our families, mm -hmm. and it's quite possible that it will be in Korea. So okay, yeah. okay, yeah. great, sense. great. And uh, by the way, Mike's wife is here in the studio as, as well, and uh, she's Korean, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, she's pretty Korean. Yeah, <laughs> so she's pretty. Yeah, Korean. <laughs> Mike has a marriage here as well. So yeah, just just wanted to put out that. That's important. It is an important yeah, part I of do. the decision. Yeah. We'll yeah. talk about exactly. this later. Yeah, 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 yeah just sure. to give you context. For yeah. sure. For sure. Okay, and we have finally April. Yay, it's my turn. Uh, the first time I came to Korea, I was really young and um, planned to stay for a couple of years, which I did. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after two or three years, I think, um, I went back to the U.S. to take care of some family stuff mm -hmm. and ended up staying there like a lot longer than I planned, uh, almost two years in the U.S. So during that time, I was still communicating with a lot of my friends here. Mm -hmm. And one of my friends uh, and his wife, who are also Korean American, they started a production company. Oh. And long story short, they were like, hey, we're going to put on these musicals for children all in English, and we want you to like be a part of the team. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was like, okay, maybe I should go back to Korea and give this 
a chance. Like, oh. let's see. That's how I got into voice acting oh. through some of the people that I met in that uh, production company. And, you know, I just kept getting career opportunities and open doors. And mm. so I just kept walking through them. And, you know, fast forward a vague number of years later, and here I am. <laughs> You're all so cool. poetic, man. Yeah. With the way you say it. Walking yeah. through doors, doors like yeah. beauty, whatever, man. All I mean, you know. and everything here. <laughs> yeah, but so far I, I'm loving this talk because it sounds like Korea is... A new place for like opportunities. It's a mm, land of absolutely. opportunities. Yeah, yeah sure. nowadays. That's why it's hard to leave. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of opportunities. Right, right. So let's go into like the general point of view for our viewers that might be contemplating on whether to come to Korea or stay in Korea for a longer time and stuff like that. So you have the experts here, the pros. Oh. 10 plus years of experience in Korea. <laughs> for so some of us. They know what they're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Language is a, obviously a barrier for you guys to live in Korea, yes. right? Mm -hmm. um, it's not your, like your mother tongue. How does that affect your decision in living in Korea or living longer? Korean is definitely not my mother tongue. It's probably not even like my third cousin twice. Third, <laughs> <laughs> third cousin. <laughs> is a one night stand for you? Is that what it was? <laughs> I mean, it's still in the family. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, my Korean is terrible. That's one of the reasons why I hesitate to say exactly how long I've lived here because mm. it's, it's kind of embarrassing. Honestly, my Korean is so bad and it, it does make living here and like making a life here difficult mm -hmm. um, and challenging. There's always like an extra step, an extra yeah. wall. But would language be like a determining factor a deal breaker for you guys mm. if you're like considering oh should i live in korea a little bit more but then like uh the language is a little bit uncomfortable on, on a daily basis I, I can say that knowing the language really makes life a lot easier mm -hmm. easier and i think you know korea especially in the year 2023 like mm -hmm. knowing just english i think you can get by yeah. But, you know, by saying, oh, I can get by, mm -hmm. that means that there are a lot of things you cannot do. Right. Exactly. You're just, you're kind of surviving, not thriving sort yeah, of thing. Like yeah. I had to go do, like, get my taxes done mm. a couple oh, of weeks back. Taxes. Oh, and I went, I went all right. by myself for that. Yeah. Oh, no. And Where were you? Those I, words. Yeah. yeah. But, that's, a, that's a scary time. But I was able to do it. But I was <laughs> able to do it. Okay. I actually did it. Yeah, that's, and, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, and yeah. it was more just like, just when you're exposed to it and you have that like your brain is a lot open that's mm -hmm. a lot open your brain is open to actually like <laughs> understanding like this yeah. vocabulary these words like before when i was like an international school teacher and i wasn't really like learning as much korean mm -hmm. i would not know like what income tax was in korea mm -hmm. oh, right. i yeah. wouldn't know these terms but then when i quit that and then i had to like live out in like real korea yeah right, then right. i like had to learn things out of pure survival right, right? Okay. exactly and so i think like for me like living here learning the language is like it's not as much as a deal break as it is a must like yeah. i have to do it to survive right. mm -hmm. i think that's what separates it it's not something you have to do to live here or stay here but if you don't learn that language that's going to be something that pulls you into the decision to go back home. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you mm -hmm. learn the language, that has pulled me to the decision to stay because mm -hmm. it opens all these other doors. Right. And not just job opportunities, but you know, access to cultural traditions where mm -hmm. a family will invite mm -hmm. you to their home for songpyeong. Yeah. Um, Bingo. Uh, a chuseok or whatever. Right. right? Mm -hmm. So that is something where you don't need Korean, but that will be a determining factor subconsciously in whether or not you stay or not. Because like Mike said, I mean, there's simple, well, both of you, like, mm -hmm. there's simple things that you don't even think about yeah. mm -hmm. because you don't have access to the language. Like, as a simple example, I had not even thought about putting my money from my bank into a savings account. Mm -hmm. And my girlfriend was just like, your money's just sitting there. What are you, what are you doing? Yeah, like, I don't not know. Investing. Oh, because yeah. you don't, it's not just about not being able to speak the language when you do your taxes. We don't think to look for other opportunities either. Mm -hmm. And like finding the right tax mm -hmm. account and finding the right place to put your money, finding the right discount on a credit card right all these things come about because you learn the language and it makes it easier mm -hmm. and yeah. makes you more want to stay because you know how to sur navigate and survive yeah that's right that's so right so basically if you learn the language your life is going to be richer here yes in experience friendship relationships and money and probably money, <laughs> yeah. Money yeah. As well. yeah. yeah so i guess like if you are considering to live longer in korea then definitely Kore learning korean is a plus yeah. So let's go into cost of living. Hmm. Yeah. Changing Compared to America. I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? It's way cheaper, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, it's funny because for me, 
I have lived most of my adult life here. Like I came here directly out of university and I did go back home and stay for a while, but I was mostly living with family or friends. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so, um, I don't have a a wide selection to compare it to, but when I talk to my friends at home or even my family, yeah, the cost of living here is much more affordable, Affordable, which for me personally has been a big reason why I've stayed so long. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah. Yeah. Speaking about like living here is affordable. You know, you go, if you go back to the States right now, the inflation and living costs, it's it's crazy, right? Like I'm going to America, Mm -hmm. like I'm going to LA next week and I'm already... Good luck. (laughs) That's the problem. I'm already going to LA. You're going to LA. There's a a reason why I lived in a car when I lived in LA. Oh my God. But like, I'm (laughs) already horrified with the tips I have to give. Like I'm I'm not against tips. Have you heard of tipflation? It's okay. You can be against tips. (laughs) Do you know what tipflation is? No. It's like where now every part of American society, someone puts out a chip a tip jar uh-huh. and it's like someone who's like giving you a donut now like there's a tip jar and you feel awkward about uh, not tipping not giving it. and the mm-hmm. currently at restaurants it used to say like do you tip 12 15 or 20 percent on the yeah, electronic yeah, thing yeah. now mm-hmm. it's 20 25 30 what yeah like so you have it to like be 14 int- for really? like it has last gotten so the low or control. other really i didn't know that so it says other so you have to like intentionally put in like a lower number what? if and so it's really awkward and you so you have taxes on top of your food and then you have a tip oh. and you it's terrible yeah i mean america, considering get it the together. global economy <laughs> and get it together economy. america yeah but still like speaking of so compared to living in america and korea is this like a determining factor for you to stay here like the living cost and God. affordability H- housing is scary here that's housing still, is scary. Sca- here. Housing is scary here, and I think it's just it's just the way it's done. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. just different, right? Yeah. Like with the whole like Jonse or and, key money. And yeah. The, yeah, yeah, that whole the whole mm-hmm. key money thing is like terrifying, you know. And like mm-hmm. the area that I live in in Incheon, mm-hmm. I mean, first of all, I live in Songdo, right? So yeah. like <laughs> that's a pretty expensive place. Too. It's, it's already expensive. So yeah. like getting like a three bedroom apartment. I'm trying to think of square feet. I know Pyong. Mm-hmm. I I can talk in Pyong now. So it's like like 24 Pyongish. Like you're. Oh, yeah, John say it's like three, three to four. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's it. That's not. I mean, I mean, compared I'm to Seoul, like compared stuff. to Seoul, compared, yeah, to, compared Seoul. to Seoul. Oh man, that's a deal. But it's, it's like it's gonna be double in Seoul. Yeah. Oh wow. But like I've seen one also that's like right in front of Central Park. It was like now, granted, it's in front of Central Park. This is like eighteen, mm-hmm. eighteen. Oh. We're talking about Incheon Central Park. So yeah. Incheon Central Park, <laughs> not New York. New York. <laughs> eighteen Oak is about one point five million, and his what you were talking about is around three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh, so like, yeah, even in Seoul, the, the medium house is like 900 and it's almost a million dollars Yeah. for the medium. And no one in Korea can afford it, to be no. honest. Like people are just taking out massive loans to Mortgages, do it. Yeah. But it's the pressure to then, uh, prices are going to go up so high that if I don't buy it now, I have to buy it like today. Right. And so besides, yeah, like everything else, housing is terrifying. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's it, right? Versus back home is like, all right, you know, you'll have a deposit, which might be like a couple thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. But then after that, you just pay monthly rent. Okay. And, and it's also it. bigger too. Like right. housing it's bigger. is bigger. It's the bigger. space. Yeah. That being said, everything else, my brother, when he got out of college, made more money than me like every year. Mm-hmm. But I've been able to save more money in Korea. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And that be- yeah. that's because of not having a car, easy public transportation, and... Food, even though food is going up in Korea, mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. still cheaper than America. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's there, true. There's weird things that are very expensive here, but overall, yeah. I think yeah. it's the cost of living yeah. is is better. Than, okay, yeah. so to wrap it up, except housing prices, every, everything else is pretty much good. Except and, housing prices and, f- and watermelon. Fruit? Yes. Fruit? <laughs> uh, fruit, fruit, okay. Fruit and the housing. Whoa, it's the so fruit. expensive, it's insane. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so living costs, uh, Korea wins. Easily. I okay. think so. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you might want to consider uh, living here if you want to save up some money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And have a more, you know. Compared to America. Full course. life. Compared, compared to America. Full yeah. life. But I'm <laughs> I get that reference. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh okay. So we've covered cost of living. Uh, let's go into safety and security. Would you want to go back to America in terms of safety and security? I, I ain't getting shot here, so I'm <sighs> all right. Yeah. No guns here. Yeah. That's a yeah. big pro. Yeah. It's... Uh, You know, I I know that the media has a tendency to like blow up things that are happening, but the fact of the matter is like there are shootings and crime and all kinds of stuff all the time. And that stuff on a day to day basis, like if you're just talking about daily life, it doesn't happen here. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are terrible things that happen. Of course, there's crime, but 
you know, you can go into a cafe and leave your laptop and your wallet and whatever on the table and walk away and not have to worry about it. I feel no um, nervousness about walking home yeah. at like two o'clock in the morning if I'm out late with friends or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think that's the key though. It's it's not about the likelihood of being shot. Okay, technically it's low in America, right, but right. it's that nervousness mm -hmm. that every day of the, like I'm back in America, mm -hmm. if I go to a mall, if I went to the fireworks, if I went to a movie, I think about, is someone gonna shoot someone here? And like, mm. so there's a daily- yeah, or is somebody gonna take my wallet? Or yeah. somebody gonna, yeah. you It's know. a daily stressor. And those stressors, when I see my family talking about it, like in America, it builds up. And they live a more stressful life because they, you know, if you're a parent, you're worried about your kid at school. Again, likelihood, not likely. Right. Mm -hmm, but when you mm -hmm. see a school shooting once every two weeks, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's, it just weighs in on you. And I think it actually takes a psychological toll on you when it comes yeah. to safety mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and plus the yeah, fact that it's true. safer here relatively yeah. speaking yeah true. right true. relatively speaking of course but i think i think you hit the nail on the head it's more like the mm -hmm. mental stress of like what is it that you're thinking about mm -hmm. in the back of your mind as you're living your day-to-day -day life and here you're not thinking about getting shot or getting mugged or like whatever usually you right. know yeah <laughs> but you know you know it's funny as an american too i can imagine you know you have people there like but you live in south korea there's oh, no yeah. korea well <laughs> well you guys we, nuclear bomb we, right did all, we did almost <laughs> die from a new nuclear bomb a couple weeks ago yeah. right oh right. did, alarm, did yeah. anyone else get woken up at six o'clock in the morning no i was passed out i was, late oh, work, yeah. so I just, I I was yeah. so angry about that I woke up in heaven. <laughs> so like, okay so yeah like besides the guns though like uh, everybody's here is american so like we're talking about guns obviously mm -hmm. but like for the viewers that are more international and some people might not have like gun True. Uh, so influence in their that countries. is a very american problem. so in general mm -hmm. terms uh, specifically as a woman, mm. like a lot of our viewers are women. Mm -hmm. So as a woman, do you feel safe in Korea? And is that a determining factor for like living in Korea longer? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I would say that it's a determining factor for living in Korea longer, but it definitely has made me feel safe and comfortable here as I do live here. Um, and I'm, I'm single mm -hmm. as well. Um, and so, you know, I'm by myself most of the time. And yeah. so, um, yeah, I think as far as like overall quality of life, safety wise i i do feel very good here um in korea you know walking around by myself whether it's nighttime daytime yeah because you know, like i had a lot of female friends that were from i'm not i'm not trying to like you know um insult their countries or anything for for example i had a friend from brazil and mm. she was like i'm never going going to go back to my country again like mm. you know the the amount of safety i feel here like it's incomparable like i could not go back to my own country and like go through the daily threads of everything that's happening over mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and like some people from india they're like oh this is so much safer mm -hmm. here so yeah like those kind of things I, th I guess it piles up as your decision to like you know should i live here longer or not like should i go back or not korean mm -hmm. safety issues are always freak accidents so it comes from yeah. the sewol ferry it comes from the itaewon incident mm -hmm. and it comes from the K-pop concert where the crate, the subway crate fell underneath people. Mm -hmm. They happen and they, they're definitely scary, but they're one-off times. I think overall, like Korea gets an A minus across the board on every category. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, pretty, even, right. even the actual crime, it's just, it's rare. Like when it happens, it's like, oh my God, like it's shocking. Yeah. You know, right. like if there's a stabbing or something like yeah. that, yeah. It's, it's shocking, but it happens so far in between. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. it just, you never really see it. Yeah. I think that's why people that's, are so shocked. That's why it's more like amplified and highlighted in the media itself right. because it's yeah. so rare. Like right. some stabbing happens, like everyone on the news is talking about it for a week. Mm. Yeah. And like the legislators are making laws around that one mm. single crime and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So yeah. Yeah. Just like school shooting. All right. How many? <laughs> oh Thanks. my God. Yeah. Right. That's how we do it. So uh -oh. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on to a lighter topic. What about fun? Entertainment. Yay. Yeah. Korea is fun. <laughs> Love it. Busan is good. Like a lot of people I've heard say like, you know, you never get bored in Seoul. So like when I go back to my country in Europe or whatever, it's a countryside place. There's nothing there. Everything shuts down at six. You know, like I, I get constant stimulus here in, in Seoul. It's a yeah. lot. Yeah. Let me, I, got, I got this because my uh -oh. friend went back home with his wife who is Korean. They went back to Minneapolis. And he was like, he got back home and he had nothing to talk about with people because he wanted to talk about life, adventure, things he did. Mm. But when he got to America, he was he would be in these conversations. They'd be like, so did you hear there's a new Dunkin' Donuts down the street? <laughs> get, out oh, get out of here. Hey, I like <laughs> donuts. Yeah, yeah well, oh, you like donuts too? And then like the other one would be like, <laughs> Well, what about Bobby's kid? Bobby's kid is a little, little brat at school, I heard. And he, it's just these 
Where here, you do get so many options, especially in any city where you're on. It's like, you go to the beach, it's a two hour drive. Are you gonna go to a Norabong? Not tonight, I wanna go to a cool cafe. Not today, I wanna go to like the Han River. Not today, there's so many options. We're in, a, in other non-metropolitan cities, which is most of America, it's not all New York and LA, mm -hmm. You don't get those options, and life is slow, mm. and that's kind yeah. of a difference. I mean, like a lot of people, it, there are two types of people, like the slow life people and the fast life people. I guess it's maybe city, um, rural, urban, stuff like that. So which type are you guys, and which do you prefer? I'm slow life, actually. Slow, slow I actually life? like slow life. Slow life. I, I don't Are you Alex? <laughs> I'm living the fast life, but I am. I was like... <laughs> I love my vacations out of the city. <laughs> then you're not really apt with Seoul, you know? Like, Seoul is pretty fast. Yes, it's really very. Yeah. It's all very, my jobs are here. What yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, okay. okay. The, I, I thought I, I was not expecting Alex to say that answer because I, I was going to be like, well, I'm probably the, the odd person out or like you're the deadbolt advocate, but I'm definitely a slow life slow. person. We're all, and just for the record, we're all countryside America, that's, relatively countryside. I mean, I'm from the Burbs. Me too, suburbs. the Burbs. Suburbs. I grew up okay. in the suburbs. suburbs. But yeah, for me, um, and I think what you were saying is really accurate. It's like the city life, not necessarily soul specifically, mm -hmm. that it, it like wears on me, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Like I'm an introvert. I like quiet. <laughs> I know that's surprising. You're an introvert? I am. <laughs> He's I like, am. What, you? Just I look am. at her Instagram and it's all like stories of, of plants, trees, birds. Yes. Birds. Yes. Yes. No wonder. <laughs> Books, cafes. Yes, <laughs> it's chickens. absolutely correct. Um, so yeah, I think I... I agree with Alex where there's like so many options of things to do here and that is appealing like oh you can go to the river you can go to like a, a pop-up store you can go to a concert you can do this and that is cool but I think for me that's one of the things that's kind of playing into my decision to uh, to leave because oh, okay. the the city mm. is like it's like too much it's overwhelming yeah. it's yeah, overwhelming yeah, yeah. and I I'm I think I'm ready for like uh, something a bit more calm <laughs> to be okay. honest yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I think that's why I really like the size of Korea like mm -hmm. when you go, every time I go back to the U.S., I realize just how big that place is. Mm. Yeah, you know, and and if I want to do something entertaining, mm. I have to drive, drive, yeah, far for it, right? And so, like, you know, I live in Incheon, so it's like, there's stuff to do out there. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you compare it to Seoul, obviously, right. you know, there's nothing. But I can drive to like the capital city of the uh -huh. country, no mm -hmm. problem, right? Mm -hmm. Or I can take a bus. Yeah, it takes like an hour, mm -hmm. then I'm there, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know. I, I really like the city life, but I like being able to more to access it rather than oh, to live in it mm, and then like become smart. a part of it. I like yeah. to access okay. it. And then when I'm done, I'm like, thanks. Yeah. yeah. And then just kind of <laughs> back off. You never lived Slide in Seoul, back. right? I mean, you've never lived, lived in Seoul. right outside of Seoul the whole time. Oh, right. you've I never lived in Seoul? I lived in Suwon, in Suwon oh. and in Incheon. Okay. Yeah, I, I lived in Pyeongtaek my first year in Korea. Oh, so. okay. Yeah. So yeah, you get it. You yeah, get I, it. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a good strategy. Like you sleep and eat and like whatever, like your residence is in a satellite city. And yeah. then you come to Seoul for the fun. You know, it's a, it's a nice balance. Yeah. yeah. I guess like people who are maybe overwhelmed like April could take that path. And then that would like affect your happiness or your satisfaction. A, a lot of lifers yeah. on the topic of lifers, a lot of expat lifers who get married and have kids here do move to those satellite cities and yeah. don't live in mm -hmm. Seoul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a good strategy. I, I, so, I, I, yeah. Seoul is very like, it's like a party party type of city, right? It is. Yeah. It is. Right. It's intense. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dark circles, man. They're getting. Uh, it's getting <laughs> uh, and also moving to a satellite city has its pros because uh, the housing prices yeah. are way oh, so true. much cheaper. Yeah. So much cheaper there. So like if you are considering to live here longer, that might be a good option for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about the most important? education and career opportunities. Oh. Oh. Yes, this is like the highlight, I think. The opportunities are getting more and more every year as we talked about. Mm -hmm. And for me, the problem is a little bit of what we talked about with the busy city life in that I'm getting more opportunities because I am living the fast paced life. Mm -hmm. I am going out for drinks on a Thursday with the producer. I am uh, meeting people randomly who are in my network. I I'm hanging out a lot. And the opportunities, if you learn Korean, mm -hmm. if you play the Korean game, that's yeah. the big one. You have to play the Korean game. Don't be this American who's just like, oh, just do things my way. Um, and, and you try, you will get those opportunities. Mm -hmm. But I'm finding it to be a little stressful in big city life where the more money I make, the more tired I am. And mm. that's my decision making process right now is like, do I want to continue this path yeah. where I feel like if I continue to do more like producer roles or whatever, does that mean I have to drink more on the weekdays? Does mm -hmm. that mean I have to see my family less or my kids less when I have them? That is the opportunities are here. It, it's just 
you can have an easy life, you can have a slow life, but you can also work hard and get what you want, but then it becomes difficult too. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's all I have to say about that. I know there's different aspects here, but that's my kind of life as a freelancer in media in Korea. Okay. And does that affect you? Like you, you're considering to become another profession Correct. Right? in maybe America potentially too? So. I'm considering become a pilot mm. for a commercial airline and I could be a pilot in Korea or I could be a pilot in America. And part of me getting older, I'm in my mid thirties now is kind of like, I need a little more stability mm -hmm. and I don't necessarily want to live that. I live in Hongdae. Like, oh, that's why I was so surprised when Alex was like slow life. I was like, you live, I live in Hongdae. Hongdae. Oh my God. You're I out can't all even stand that. Time. You understand. <laughs> if I look at my calendar now, it's like I have friends coming in from who lived in Korea, come back. I have friends coming in from Incheon, from other parts of Korea. And so they come to Hongdae and they need someone because they don't drink out. a lot, yeah. but they need someone who can have a drink in Hongdae on a Tuesday and <laughs> uh -huh. hang out. And I just like pick up the phone. I'm like, the guy. Uh, yeah, I'm free. Yeah, it's cool. I got this. Oh, if God. that were me, it would throw my phone into oh, the that's, ocean. That's, that's <laughs> living in the it. center, just living in the center. It of is. It, all. it was cool in your twenties. It is cool in your twenties. It's a mm. great life. You mm. meet awesome people, and then when you get old and you have two day hangovers, you're like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be. I want to be a pilot and just get away from this stuff sometimes. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I I get where you're coming from, but maybe the solution for you is also moving to a more chill place location and maybe so like Ilsan or Yo, whatever yeah. my jobs are in Ilsan which is 45 minutes oh, away perfect move there <laughs> and in Gangnam oh sorry <laughs> and in Seoul and like they're all like all these Scattered places. Up, I'm yeah. in the middle it is the perfect place for my job in uh, life except for I'm a little bit older than the Hongdae Hapjong <laughs> population yeah. Just a little bit. Just a, just a little bit. A I tab, go there and like, just yo, man. Mentally the same. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's true. <laughs> you don't look it though. You don't yeah, look it. Because I put on April's makeup before the show. He, he <laughs> That's did. why. That's a true statement. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Let's get hear there, get their stuff. Yeah. Let's hear the different perspectives. So, mm -hmm. in terms of opportunities and jobs, careers, yeah. Does uh, it make you stay to live in Korea? Yeah. Yes. I would mm -hmm. say yes. But um, just kind of piggybacking off of Alex, and I think we kind of mentioned it earlier with language as well, is that I feel that the competition is also going up mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. as well. Yeah, especially okay. the markets that we work in are becoming a lot more saturated. Yeah. Oh, can and you elaborate? Yeah. Yeah, sure. So like even think about YouTube, right? Like mm -hmm. if there's many other like markets that we're into, but just like specifically like one that I know for sure, like YouTube, you know, when I started back in like 2015-ish, mm -hmm. uh, Alex was going then. There's a lot more people that I know now that aren't really doing it as much yeah. as well. And it's like, now if you look at that same space, it's like a whole new group of people. It mm -hmm. is. And like, when I teach content, like I, I talk to a lot of like models mm -hmm. who are trying to start channels or just other people who are coming and they're like, you know, I am doing my content all about Korea, living life in Korea, doing vlogs about Korea. When I first got here, I did that too. I think everyone who comes and they start a channel, yeah. that's like the first thing they go to, right? Because mm -hmm. everything that they saw before coming or mm -hmm. everyone they saw before coming did that same thing, mm -hmm. right? So the market's just oversaturated, oh. right? And I and I find that, you know, again, piggybacking, up, uh, piggybacking off of Alex is that gaining that language kind of sets you apart from a lot of the people, because I think people pick up Korean, but they don't really ever like really get it. Like oh. they don't really, mm. I'm not gonna say master it, but mm. it's, but like really have some kind of control over it, right? Mm -hmm. you know? And like also being able to navigate in those Korean spaces mm -hmm. as well, they never really get that. Mm. No, yeah. And so that really limits uh, the, how far they can go, Okay, mm. you know? Mm. Mm. But like for me, I'm not planning to stay here. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I would have left sooner, except for every time that I make an actual step, like really start planning to leave Korea, uh -huh. some big project lands yeah, on Yeah, you said you were yeah. leaving like a few years yes. ago, I swear. I, I, <laughs> I mean, like actively had made plans to like, okay, like I'm, you know, I'm selling my furniture. Like I'm, you oh, know, I'm, I'm looking in the- that level. Oh, yeah, wow. I mean, I hadn't, I, hadn't, I hadn't actually sold anything, but I was like making plans Planning to leave. Out, yeah. And some big project, you know, comes yeah, to my door. Hey. And so I'm like, all right, I'm going to do this project. I'm going to save up a little bit more money. Mm. And then I'm going to, you know, keep going or whatever and but then that project inevitably leads to something else etc mm -hmm. and even just it's recently so i mm -hmm. yeah even very recently i was like oh you know it's time to go and i still think that um but then i you just got a dope job i landed like a humongous 
project. Wow. Yeah. Um, I, I, uh, I, I don't know if I'm, I'm allowed to say this on your podcast. It's on IMDb. It's like public info now, right? There, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's public what info. It? There's, a, there's a television show for children called Teeny Ping. Oh. And I am the voice of two animated characters wow. on that show. Oh, look so at you. Look at you. I, I'm very proud of, of that and excited about it. Yeah. But yeah, so I mean, stuff like that, that was completely unplanned. Uh-huh. And it just kind of, you know, went through an audition process and et cetera. And yeah, and I, I'm hoping, honestly, to use that to sort of catapult me into maybe a more international market yeah. um, where I can go back home. Because um, okay. for me, my like uh, family really plays a big part into right. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My dad passed away a few years ago and my mom's getting a bit older and I just, I want to go home, you know, like yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm ready, I think. And so, yeah, anyway. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, congrats on the job and the big career. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, what I think we can all uh, agree that opportunities keep on coming in. And even though Mike said that it's coming, it's becoming a little bit more oversaturated. Mm -hmm. There still is stuff to pursue here if you have the right resources and the right effort. Yes. I think that's key. Yes. Because I think across the board, especially in the entertainment industry, Mm -hmm. it is getting a, a lot of saturation. But yeah, if you have the resources and the right Oomph, you know the yeah. effort to yeah it. yeah you got to set yourself apart yeah. from a lot of people mm. if i you may cut this but that's an important point to make is that april has a very specific talent mm. as a voice actress and like she's really good at what she does thank you when we came here i just had to be speaking korean not asian looking okay i can be on tv now yeah mm. um yeah if you want to compete now like you said oversaturated uh, you got to have something you're good at right yes. right might yes. be your voice it might be point. your knowledge of politics it might be something you have mm-hmm. to really hone that skill yeah. or yeah, that whatever it is different. yes the environment is. is different right yeah. even from like chat oh go ahead no 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 no, no, no. even I, from chatting with like people about who are trying to make content yeah oh, wait, and, i want to talk about this can we do even if you cut it can we talk yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, one, one thing one thing i always talk to them i'm like do you even know who your who your uh competition is oh and then so then they start to really think about that and they say you know one thing like oh it, it would be someone like they would actually say the names mm-hmm. and all of those people all of them look just alike they all look just alike. They oh, all yeah. same hair, same color mm. eyes, because they're all within the same space. Okay. So that's your biggest competition. And if that is your competition, what sets you apart from yeah. those people? What mm. sets you apart? Because yeah, oh. a lot of the content I see in it, yeah. they make good content, they find the audience, mm-hmm. cool. But their content is like them walking with the Korean background, pointing up and being uh. like, five things I love about Korea. And it's just <laughs> this, this. And that's cool. It's going to get you in TikTok. But it ain't going to bring you into our community because mm. what is that talent that allows you to be on a radio show? Mm, I get what, what is you're that talent? Saying. So you do have to specialize to stick around here. And right. the Korean, the current Korean foreigner content creators are kind of deep, not developing that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Hopefully they will. They're young. They can. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I guess if we're talking about in a perspective of survival or just like, you know, um, staying longer here mm-hmm. uh, and getting better jobs and, you know, improving as a person as well, then you just have to, you know, find your own thing, your mm-hmm. your own niche, your own skill. That's and right. And then, yeah, yeah develop right. that. You have to evolve. Yeah, and that's right. Yeah. That's and right. then your quality of life follows and snowballs with that Mm -hmm. and you'll love korea (laughs) eventually yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) and yeah that's that might be your determining factor whether you put in the effort or not to Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. um cope with korean society so okay that's that's a nice point point of view it's time for me to leave korea Mm -hmm. i might i might leave within a few months even and then i'm like oh look i just got booked for this (laughs) humongous project jobs keep on coming that's why i'm staying yeah i mean that's that's kind of the case for me too like i'm a Mm -hmm. local here but i want to move out of seoul yeah, 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 I want to leave Seoul because, like, I, I'm kind of uh, similar to you guys. I'm an introvert. I Let's don't like just this. all move to freaking Busan or Jeju. Yeah, Jeju-o. I want to go to Busan. That's yeah. my hometown, actually. We can make oh, this content oh, there. Busan. But the only thing that's holding me here is the jobs, the all yeah. the careers, saving and, money, yeah, yeah, the yeah, opportunities. Yeah, yeah. Everything's mm-hmm. just here. Yeah. So. so here, if you can go yeah. to the Korean Pizza Club Patreon and make his dreams come true. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Drop yeah. those dollars. But still, like even even so, even if I have the money, all the guests, all the people will yeah, be yeah. in Seoul. So for me to run a podcast, I would physically That's have to be. True. In Seoul. I might yeah. move down there. If I, I might be a pilot in Korea, <laughs> we could yo. do like a duo yeah. podcast every single yeah. week. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Why not? Yeah. You could make it work. My girlfriend's from that area, so I, I got reason uh, to go. Yeah, guys, go to Busan. Yeah. <laughs> Stop coming to Seoul. I recommend. <laughs> but like at the same time, everything's in Seoul. So yeah. What about culture and society? Hmm. Is this a plus for making you to stay here or 
What do you think? Culture I mean, I guess, you know, you guys are both in relationships and like one of you is married. Mm-hmm. And so I think for you guys, not to speak for you, but I think that's like a big part of what is, you're, you're is speaking for me. Right. Is, uh, <laughs> is, is based on what you've said, like kind of helping you like settle in and like have roots here uh-huh. or whatever. And I guess, you know, for me, it, I mentioned earlier, like I'm single. I don't, I don't really have any roots here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I do have a lot of really good friends, mm-hmm. which I guess goes into culture and society. I have amazing friends here. So that does, you know, keep me settled a little bit, but I think, yeah, it also makes it easier to being on the outskirts of the culture mm. and not being in a relationship of any kind makes it easier for me to kind of like, Whew, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. leave. <laughs> uh-huh. I don't, uh-huh. there's nothing keeping me here. You right, know? Yeah. right, right. What about you guys? Uh, I feel that because I am married. Mm-hmm. Watch what you say. She's here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey. I was going to say I'm. <laughs> love, we <laughs> love being here. There's nothing wrong with the Koreans. I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. You're but committed. I'm committed. You're I'm, committed. I'm, I'm committed. I'm stuck in love. <laughs> stuck, stuck in love. love. Stuck That's in love. so nice. romantic. Yes. No, so that I'm, is, that so is not a happy face. Over she there. looks a little horrified. Yeah, <laughs> put that finger down. So, uh, so I'm not going anywhere. But I would say, um, also as a as a male, mm-hmm. um, kind of marrying into Korean culture is a lot different from right. if I was a woman yes. marrying into Korean uh, culture. That's right. And so I would say for like women who are interested in dating Korean men like maybe have never studied, ab- lived abroad, or their families are very traditional, mm-hmm. you're really going to have to think twice, mm-hmm. three times mm-hmm. about that because that comes with its own territory, right. its yeah. own yep. responsibilities mm-hmm. versus me. Like as a guy, I mean, I think men just kind of already have a, they have a leg up anyway mm-hmm. when it comes to like marriage, but then yes. also because I'm foreign, mm-hmm. foreign, I kind of get away with some things that I wouldn't have to do mm-hmm. right. if I was Korean. So Like cultural faux pas kind of a thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, cleaning up after dinner, man, they take care. Uh, as a guy, foreigner, my family treats me, uh, my girlfriend's family treats me extremely well and it's nice. Okay. I would say with culture, it's because we've learned the language, especially, and we've kind of dipped our foot into Korean culture. It actually, no, we like dove in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Once you get in, I find it exciting to learn the new things or to hear mm-hmm. the new things or try the new things. And even if it's uncomfortable, you know, Koreans have been so welcoming to us. Mm. The more, especially the more Korean we've learned, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that to me, I find it exciting. And that's why I'm here, actually. I yeah. think that's why I've been here for 14 years, is because there's always something new. That's yes. I'm afraid true. of going home to America because I'm afraid I'll be stuck there and nothing will change. And yeah. then I'll have kids, they go to high school, I get old, I die. Like, that's what I'm afraid of. Mm-hmm. A very straightforward life. Mm-hmm. Where in Korea, new things are still happening. Mm. Yeah. It's very rapid here. Yeah, it is. Agree. Yeah, but like uh, extending the talk about like relationships and culture, family here. Um, usually, there's a lot of cases out there that uh, foreigners, um, you know, confront and like have conflict with other relatives or family members in Korea, right? About marriage or dating or stuff like that. So, would you think that is a big barrier for um, foreigners living in Korea? Like, wh- why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> that is story of my life. Oh, that is the story, <laughs> story of your of life. my life. Yeah, yeah. Right so, like, I mean, you endured until now, right? Yes. And okay. you withstood that. Yeah. So, like, at one, I just want to ask you: at one point, did was that one fact? Like, oh, maybe I just want to leave. Yeah, I mean, there were multiple times where I, where I thought about just even, <laughs> even, even my <laughs> wife, who's over there. She there were times where she was just like. She felt bad because she felt that she was like doing me a disservice oh. because of the, her family. And like, and now, I mean, looking at things now, like I love her family and everything. They love me. Mm-hmm. But like we dated for like three and a half years. Mm-hmm. And I would say, let me see, within about a year and a half ish, mm-hmm. then I proposed we were engaged. A couple of months before, no, maybe it was one month before the actual marriage. Mm-hmm. I was invited over to her parents' place and to have dinner for oh, them to wow. talk to me. Wow. Like it was literally because we were actually planning the whole marriage mm. okay. without them. Mm-hmm. Oh. We had all the details figured out and everything. And then at the last moment, like the parents swooped in. Yeah. It was like they're like, okay, we're we're on board. <laughs> yeah. And then they were like, all right, we're gonna we're gonna invite these people and you're gonna have this restaurant come and uh-huh. cater to the wedding and da 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 da. 
And then we were just like, it's almost like we got whiplash because yeah. all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah. you know, they were involved in, again, love them to death. But mm -hmm. yeah, it was very sudden mm -hmm. when it was almost like it just went 180 mm -hmm. overnight. Okay. What's, well, oh, cool. what's kind of interesting about that is you got married, what was it, five years ago? Uh, four years ago. So it was four years ago and I am in the process of getting to that moment. Mm-hmm. However, the amount of change that's happened in the last 10, 15 years, even five years, the people, there are so many now international couples on TV. That's true. International babies on TV. Yes. Like on that, YouTube as well. On YouTube. That that's why we made the yeah. dating show. Hey. Yeah. Uh -huh. Remnant show. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. That Remnant exposure too. has actually, I'm not sure that my girlfriend's parents would have been open to an international relationship 10 years ago. I don't know either way, mm -mm. but they are from the South. They're a little more conservative in some ways. So, the people who have done that, who have put in the work before me, uh, whether they're on TV, like, okay, Mike, just Mike, Mike, whatever. Um, but those people have actually made it a little bit easier to have those international relationships now mm -hmm. because the older generations have seen it. Yeah. And actually, I would say it's easier for me now than it was for Mike for a variety of reasons, right. but also just because I'm black. Mike. Yeah, because I'd say it, you said it. What? You are? I don't, yes. I don't see race. Surprise. I don't see color. What oh my this? goodness. Oh my God. That did play a factor. Yeah. That did that, play that a big was a factor. Right. That the was representation a big factor. out there sure, is sure. like better yeah. than before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, my mom's also like that too. Like she's like watching, um, you know, also wa or mm -hmm. some some stuff shows like that and she's like oh there's so many international couples nowadays and i'm like actually i'm dating this american she's like what <laughs> but, like, but still she's That's like how you told your mom <laughs> <laughs> i have something to say oh my god you're coming out as by the way yeah. an interracial relationship <laughs> right 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 <laughs> but like as alex said the environments are changing and i think for a lot of people here that are in serious relationships as you guys all said throughout the podcast Family is the most determining factor oh, yeah. right, mm -hmm. wherever so. you are to mm -hmm. whether you go back home or you stay here. So like if you start a new family here and the environment's hostile, it's very hard for you. Mm -hmm. yes. But now that it's changing, yeah. I guess it's more acceptable and more uh, friendly towards uh, foreigners that mm -hmm. are um, planning to live in Korea. So yeah. yeah, I guess that's a good uh, change in direction. Yeah. It's a great change. Right. So we have <laughs> talked about a lot of stuff today. I'm mean, fun editing. Yeah, this is going to yeah. be great. Yeah, it's been an hour. So let's do a wrap up okay. finally. Um, what is your final advice you would give to someone who is contemplating whether to live in Korea or not or like leaving Korea what, whatsoever? What about yeah. April start since she's the one who might leave okay. first? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe it sounds like cliche advice, but I guess I would just say like figure out what is important to you and what your priorities are. If your priority priorities or something that's important to you is um, living like a fast paced city lifestyle and, you know, having career opportunities and you are coming here for a specific career opportunity or you're here for a specific career opportunity. Um, and yeah, and you kind of like the sort of party party lifestyle, mm -hmm. then there you go. But if your priorities are different, if you know you have some other things that are more important to you, or you feel like maybe a slower life, or you know, family, etc., back home is more important to you, then yeah, I, I that's what I would say. And maybe that sounds cliche, but I would just say figure out what's important to you and what your priorities are, and that will help you for sure make your decision. Of course, yes, that makes sense. Okay, and Alex, for me having been contemplating this decision for like two years now of whether I stay or go, mm -hmm. I think the one thing I've learned figuring this out is that there actually isn't a right answer for many people. Yeah, that's for, right. For a few people there are, but especially in our cases, whether or not we leave or stay, I have a great life here. And if I go home, I'll have a great life. And that's been the hardest thing mm. to grapple with. And I came to a point where I've made a decision to make a decision by this date. Like yeah. I, you can't, sit on this because if you sit and don't make a decision it actually holds you back longer well mm -hmm. not making a decision is also making it's, a decision it's an mm -hmm. involuntary decision and mm -hmm. it's it's mm -hmm. it would hurt my future prospects if i continue to not make that decision so right. mm -hmm. understanding that there might not be a correct answer. this is life there is no correct answer yeah, all the way that's true. that's true so you just have to choose one hope you made the right decision and know that you can always come back if you have to yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's something that my mom said when my dad passed away. Anyway, she was like, 
Korea is not going anywhere. <laughs> you know, like you don't have to like feel like one decision that you make or the other is like mm-hmm. so permanent, yeah. you know? And mm-hmm. so I was like, oh, that's, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I would say, I just searched through my head, just like, what would be something really wise to say? Uh, <laughs> what is TikTokable? How can we make this a short? <laughs> Nothing came up, but I would say. Mr. Uh, life is content. Oh, life is <laughs> content. Um, I would say, just give it a shot. Give mm-hmm. it a go. Um, I know it's it's a little bit more just like, oh, just do it. But, you know, um, I think you will always wonder what if, if what you if? don't. Mm. And uh, like when I came, I was in my late 20s. And I can imagine now I'm 30, how old am I? How old are we? 36. You're, you're 30 36. something. Mm-hmm. 36. <laughs> so like now being a 36 year old, like there are other factors mm-hmm. that play in, you know, right? whether that is having my own family, knowing that I'm now getting older, you know, mm-hmm. where I'm going in life and everything, like all those things are starting to play a role. Mm-hmm. And so I would say if you haven't, if you're thinking about it, do it. Yeah. Do Jump it. for it. Just do it. Yeah. It's one of those it. things, you know, and just don't, don't wonder what if. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That is actually good yeah. advice. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. it is. Mm. Yeah. I think you guys' advice is really great, actually. Like, Korea is not going anywhere. Just do whatever you want. <laughs> you <know>? <laughs> Figure <laughs> out your priorities. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't worry about what if, you yeah. know? Just yeah. Do if it. you stay here, you stay here. If you leave, you leave. You, know? <laughs> you can always come back. You're welcomed. <laughs> yeah. So just make a decision, which yeah, is what Alex yeah. said. Yeah. <laughs> but just know that Korea is welcoming all foreigners officially now. Like, <laughs> for real. Like, yo, we need a solution to the birth rate problem. You know, I'm not trying to like materialize that, you guys Get on that mic but, <laughs> but, the birth rate problem but I, the government yeah the government is officially prioritizing international couples here oh. and there's, marriages here so. there's so many people out there like sign me up yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> wait pro- prioritizing like in what like way? they're like giving how? a lot of benefits advantages yeah. like really? in housing you know lotteries huh. and like welfare stuff like that i yeah. see so get that if you're interested yeah that <laughs> might that might be a determinant to, uh a uh, game-changing point whether you stay in Korea or not, because housing is such a big deal here. Mm-hmm. If you just clear that housing issue because yeah, you're an international yeah. couple, then you're set. You're you know? solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My my goal as a Korean is to own a house. Oh, I thought you were going to say to be an international nope. couple. Nope. <laughs> my goal is as a Korean is to own a house. But if you can have advantage over that and get your house mm-hmm. and, you know, set your roots in Korea. International somewhere. relationship, have three babies. Yes. Within seven years of your marriage, get that housing lottery. You got yeah. this, baby. You got oh, it. I believe in you. Yes. Good. Make some babies for Korea. Yes, yes. Okay, what a nice way to wrap that up. <laughs> Leave it to Alex. Wow. Yeah, so, okay, this is a very delightful conversation with you guys uh whether to stay or to leave in korea uh the term lifer it was all fun so thank you everybody to uh Thanks for, for having coming us. thank yes. you so much i hope thank it helps you. people this was yeah, so much it, i think fun. it will help a lot of people you guys is insight and it, it was awesome honestly yeah and uh yeah this was april alex and mike go check out their socials all over here and uh businesses and uh we will see you guys next time in korean pizza club Bye bye. See you next time. Bye everyone. Yeah, and go check out Patreon if you want to support. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Give them money. <laughs> Make some babies. Yeah. Patreon.com slash Korean Pizza Club. Yeah. <laughs> Five stars on Spotify. For his house. Spotify. <laughs> for yeah. His house. <laughs> yeah. For my house. <laughs> I want to live in Korea. <laughs> <laughs>